Meet Genzel, a two-month-old Angus calf that could signal the dawn of a new era. Gene-edited animals designed by humans for human consumption. First in the world. First in the world. The company that made her says she's born with traits spliced into her DNA that should allow a cold weather cow to thrive here in the Brazilian tropics. And what we're seeing now is that it works. You're about to find out why, if indeed this works, our world is about to change, and why the economic incentives driving gene editing technology are so powerful. With 200 million people, Brazil is a vast country with a vast appetite for beef. That's because the U.S. is the top producer of Angus meat. Most of Brazil's meat comes from Zebu. Do you think the regulators here are open to gene-edited meats? I think so, yeah. The agricultural sector is very open and keen of new technologies. Fernando Flores is one of the lead scientists at the Brazilian government's agricultural research entity, Embrapa. He shows us why Brazil wants to up its game. On the global market, a pound of U.S. beef is valued at around 50% more than a pound of Brazilian beef. The Zebu beef is less tender. It's leaner, not much fat, nothing of marbling. So it's tougher? It's tougher. Yeah, okay. it's less tender. We, we politically correct way to say it's less tender. Okay, thank you for correcting no, no. me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Flores tells me that among Brazilians, demand for higher-priced Angus beef is rising. Ranchers would like to raise more Angus. But here's the problem. In the summer heat, Angus just don't feel like eating. They don't put on weight. They don't get beefy. The temperature gets above 90 degrees, they're going to suffer. Tad Sonstegard, a scientist with a U.S. biotech company, Recombinetics, thinks he's found the solution. A few years back, he discovered the gene for heat tolerance in the Senepal breed, which thrives in hotter climates. He believes it's possible to give Angus the same heat-resistant trait, known as slick, using a process called gene editing. Potentially huge implications. That's right. Back in Minnesota, scientists at Recombinetics took cells from a red Angus and used a gene editing technology called Talon to modify their DNA. They deleted a single base pair from its chromosome sequence to make the Angus slick, replicating the mutation found in Senepal, the heat-resistant breed. After growing a colony of 20,000 of these gene edited cells, the batch was frozen and flown by Sonstegard down to Brazil. Here on the ranch, an American scientist, Mark Maserati, worked the magic that resulted in Genzel. It involved cloning. He took the DNA from the gene-edited cells and inserted them into eggs. A few steps from the lab, those that grew into embryos were inserted into recipient cows. Nine months later, it was time for delivery. In July, Genzel entered this world via cesarean section with a few firm tugs. She gets cleaned up. And soon, Genzel was romping around, getting to know her neighbors. Genzel was born alongside a sister, she died after about a week. Maserati says it was due to birth defects resulting from the cloning process, not the gene editing. And she could ultimately represent, what, billions of dollars? Yeah, billions of dollars, not necessarily our company, but for the production chain in general. Let's, Let's go. go meet her. Come here, girl. Already, Sanstegard says, she appears slightly different from typical Angus. <laughs> so how old is she now? Uh, she's born on July 14th, so she's just about two months old. Here, go ahead. All right, here you go. She's um, thirsty. Girl, yeah. that's all we got. 
There are a few ways he can test if Genzel is indeed heat tolerant. One is taking a closer look at her ears and hair. There's very little hair in the ears, so her hair is shorter than normal. And that makes a big difference in terms of body temperature? It allows them to cool better. They also should have more active sweat glands. And there's probably also metabolic differences on the inside that allow her to better adapt to heat. Recombinetics also tested Genzel's blood to make sure the gene editing has worked. Sanstegard says the results show it has. What is there that you don't know about Genzel yet? I'm interested in knowing how reproductively fertile she's going to be in the future. And you're interested to know how she tastes, of course. Her specifically, probably not, but definitely in the future. Her offspring, yeah, will be on our table. We've been speaking with outside experts, some of whom are skeptical. We're visiting the lab of a professor at the University of Florida, Raluca Matiscu. She studies the molecular genetics of beef cattle. Do you think that Recombinetics has found the magic bullet to create heat-tolerant Angus? It's a big step forward in terms of making those cattle more resistant to heat stress, but there are other genes involved in it, so it's not the whole uh, answer. Is gene editing itself safe? It is safe. I think if you would ask me, you know, is it foolproof? I would say no, nothing is 100% foolproof, so uh, mistakes could happen, but I think it is overall, it's a safe technology. Would you eat meats from a gene edited animal? Absolutely, yes, 100%. Give me a steak of a slick Angus and I would eat it. But before Genzel can become a cash cow, the company needs approval from Brazilian regulators. It hopes to avoid her being classified as a genetically modified organism, a GMO. First they ask the question, is she GMO or not? And uh, if they say no, then uh, there may be some other regulatory system behind it, but it should allow us to make a commercial product. But she is genetically modified. We call that precision breeding. Uh, so it gets to be semantics. Why did you decide to do this project here in Brazil? They have a different regulatory system than we do in the United States. And um, it looks like it's going to be pretty straightforward to get to market. That's what we hope. How long do you think it'll take to get to millions of gene-edited cattle here in this country? And I hope it happens within the next 10 years. Many animal rights activists and ethicists hope that Genzel and other gene-edited animals will never make it to market. They're afraid that gene editing might create animals with unforeseen problems, and some consider the procedure another form of animal cruelty. Of course, I have to ask you the philosophical question. Mm. You're manipulating nature. How do you respond to critics when they say, this ain't right? I would say that's really a sort of nonsense of viewpoint because mutations happen all the time. They're just very random. This is just a much more precise form of mutations being introduced. This idea of us playing God, mm, I don't buy that. Right now, here in Brazil, it's winter. So when summer comes, we'll be able to see that uh, she doesn't go into heat stress like a normal Angus would. If she can withstand the heat, Recombinetics plans to build a herd of gem cells. If not, it's back to the drawing board. <laughs>